The following is a presentation of the Fairfax Network. Welcome to Universal Words, the show that selects vocabulary having universal concepts. Yes, every word that we present has a place in every language. That makes them universal and important to know. During these lessons, we will inform you, entertain you, quiz you, and challenge you. Why? Because expanding vocabulary cultivates the mind. That's why. So let's start with word number one. The first word is rural. Some people say that's a hard word to pronounce. Rural means country-like. Open land, trees, dirt roads, farmhouses, and nature. Those things come to mind when I think of the word rural. Did you know that most of the United States is still rural? Most people obviously don't live there, but it sure is nice to visit and vacation in rural places. The next word is urban. It's an antonym of rural. Its meaning is city-like. Big hotels, busy streets, taxi cabs, museums, and neon, colorful lights at night. Those things come to mind when I think of the word urban. There is a word that describes the area between urban and rural places. Those are suburban areas or the suburbs. Chances are you live in the suburbs. The next word is really not a word. It's a suffix, ectomy. Its meaning is to take out. Since it's a suffix, it's always attached to the end of a word. For instance, if you've had your tonsils taken out, you've had a tonsillectomy. A person who has had their appendix removed has had an appendectomy. Are there many kinds of ectomies? Oh, there's a bunch. Adenoidectomy, hemorrhoidectomy. Sometimes ectomy is the way to go. Surgeons are the people that perform these operations. Although in my household, I'm the one who performs splinterectomies. Number four is another related suffix, itis. Its meaning, an inflammation. If your tonsils are inflamed, you have tonsillitis. An inflammation of the bronchial tubes is bronchitis. Older people get an inflammation of the tendons. You got it, tendonitis. Sinuses, sinusitis. There's meningitis, appendicitis, arthritis, and many others. So let's not inflame matters and move on to the next word. The next word is anatomy. Its definition, the study of body parts. Let's take a look at some body parts. What do we have here? A heart. Look at the four chambers and the aorta, the largest artery in the body. And here, a femur. Sometimes it's called the thigh bone the longest bone in the body. And what do we have here? Mr. Pluribus, I told you not to put the plastic models in formaldehyde. Well, here we have a hand. Let's see what's on the inside. We have the tendons and the muscles. We have carpals, metacarpals, and the phalanges, the finger bones. If you enjoy the last three words and are good at anatomy, you might consider becoming a doctor. Our sixth word is a geography term, the Strait of Gibraltar. It's a waterway that separates Europe from Africa. Or from another point of view, it connects the Atlantic Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea. Back in the early days, navigators sailed the Mediterranean Sea fearlessly. But once they went west of the Strait of Gibraltar, they wanted to keep land in sight. Another famous spot in this area is the Rock of Gibraltar, a solid rock mountain which rises steeply from the southern tip of Spain. If you climb to the top of the rock and look south on a clear day, you will see the country of Morocco in Africa. The next word is abundant. Its definition, plentiful. I'd like to think 
that abundant things are good things. We have an abundant food supply. Even in dry times, our Chesapeake watershed has an abundance of drinking water. Our natural resources are abundant. In the United States, we have an abundance of good things. And in order to keep it that way, we have to work hard at it. And when you're young, that means studying hard. Word number eight, frame of reference. This can be a fun word. Its definition is a well-known size used to compare. Everyone knows how big a basketball is. So if I told you that I grow tomatoes as big as a basketball, you should know that I'm exaggerating. To know how big a tree is in a picture, a person, a car, or even a house should also be in the picture to compare and understand the size of the tree. Would a paper clip be a good frame of reference to show the size of a diamond? Not really. Take a look at these two views. You probably know that paper clips come in two sizes, standard and the jumbo one. And except for the size, they look exactly the same. In the movie, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, props like huge blades of grass and gigantic bumblebees were used to make the actors look small. I'd like all of you to have a frame of reference for one mile. Next time you're on a road trip, look for the signs that say one mile to exit. From the sign, look for a bridge or overpass at the exit, and then put that distance in your memory. And I don't mean computer memory. The next term is periodic table. It's also called the periodic chart. In chemistry, it is the most important table. It's a chart of all the chemical elements on Earth. Each element is made up of only one kind of atom. For instance, iron has only iron atoms in it. Copper, aluminum, silver, and gold are elements that are solids. Oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, and helium are elements that are gases. Mercury is a liquid element found in thermostats and old thermometers. Water, H2O, is not an element because it's a combination of hydrogen and oxygen. It's called a compound. Isn't it interesting that two elements that are gases can be combined to make a liquid? In a little while, we'll be using some compounds and elements from the periodic table to make electricity. But first, our Latin term, pro bono publico, or if you want to say it the way the Romans said it, pro bono publico. Let's go to unum pluribus to see what this term means. Mr. Pluribus, would you tell us what pro bono publico means? It means for the good of the public. When you hear this expression, it refers to what people have done for the good of the public. People often volunteer their time and effort to public service projects. Sometimes people donate money so that concert halls can be built, libraries, parks, and other facilities that all people can use and enjoy. Whatever it is that you give pro bono publico, time, effort, or money, it gives you a feeling of satisfaction, being part of the community, and therefore, valuable citizen. Let's go to my laboratory and make some electricity. Come on, 1812. Come on, you're going to love this one. There you go. Now just watch. Don't interrupt. Today we're going to make electricity using compounds and elements found on the periodic table. The first element is copper, nice and shiny. See you on the periodic table. The next element is zinc. Now this is called a galvanized plate, which means it's a steel plate coated with zinc. The next element, chlorine, 6% solution. And salt, NaCl, sodium chloride. We will need water, which is H2O. You're all familiar with that. And now the other supplies that we'll need is a one and a half volt motor, a motion indicator, two glass rods, which will separate our metal plates, a couple of rubber bands, alligator clips, and these are called alligator clips because 
they say it looks like an alligator. We have our basin to put our solution in. So let's start. We'll take our H2O and we're gonna put some salt in. That should be enough to make this a good electrolyte, which means it's going to conduct electricity very well. Doesn't take too long to mix it up. And we'll put this in the bin, in the basin. Now, this is gonna be the wet cell. We're gonna put down one of those plates and put two glass rods on top of it. Kind of fashion a sandwich, a glass rod sandwich. After we get them in there, put rubber bands around it. Now you see, these two plates have to be close, but not touching. If any part is touching, it's gonna short it out and it will never work. Here we go. At this point, we'll put one of the alligator clips on the copper plate, the other alligator clip on the zinc plate, and place it in the solution. Now we're gonna take our motor and place the motion indicator on it. We'll attach one of these leads to one of the wires, the other lead to the other wire. And now for the science. We're going to add this chlorine. The chlorine will react with the zinc on the galvanized plate. When that happens, electrons start flying off, hundreds and thousands of them. It goes right to the copper and then directly to the motor. Let's see if it works. And there you have it. Electricity from elements and compounds. And that will spin for about three or four hours. Now that you know what you can do with elements on the periodic table, Let's see what you know about the other words that were presented today. And now for Dr. Esperanto's quiz. Listen and watch each of the clues and pick the word from today's lesson that best fits the description. Poison ivy, hives, and heat rash. Itis. Matter menu. <laughs> Periodic table. The sand on the beach, the stars in the sky. <laughs> Abundant. Elevators escalators, and a concierge. <laughs> Urban. It's like a catalog of parts. <laughs> Anatomy. Neighborhood Watch, and Adopt the Highway programs. <laughs> Pro Bono Publico. Cows, sows, and plows.
Strait of Gibraltar. It was so small, it could fit through the eye of a needle. Frame of reference. Did you know that 83% of fourth graders have pulled out a tooth in school? It's time to pick two contestants from our studio audience for Cognition Corner. And today's contestants will be Laura and Cody. Please send in the contestants. Hello, Laura and Cody. Thank you for being on Cognition Corner today. We have a language arts category. The category this time is ups and downs. That means all the answers will start with the word up or down. As soon as you know the answer, please punch in on those lights. And here goes. To raise in importance or quality. Cody. Upgrade. Upgrade is correct. Putting a vehicle into lower gear. Laura. What is downshift? Downshift is correct. The main business section of a city. Cody. Downtown. Downtown is correct. Faster cadence or being enthusiastic. Sorry, too much time. The answer is upbeat. Maintenance to a building. Too much time again. The answer is upkeep. Realistic or practical. Cody. Down to earth. Down to earth is correct. Training and education a child receives from parents. Laura. What is up with? No, we're looking for the answer upbringing. In the direction of the water current. Laura. Downstream. Downstream is correct. Australia and New Zealand. Cody. Down under. Down under is correct. When the underdog wins. Cody. Upset. Upset is correct. And today's winner is Cody. Congratulations to Cody and also to Laura. Thank you for being with us today. And to our viewing audience, goodbye, good luck, and be with us next time on Universal Words.